You've seen 4401 Procopio Drive. You've seen 0232 Palato Boulevard, but now we're going to show you the third and final low-end house up in Palato Bay. Uh, just having a little pan around the back of uh, 0232 Palato Boulevard. Now, I'm sitting here in my 4x4. That's because there was some guy trying to flex me off in his Ferrari, but I wasn't really having any of it. Anyway, let's go on to the house itself. So, obviously, Palato Bay, it's up at the top of the map. Going on sale for a record-breaking 155000 Now, that puts it exactly halfway between 4401 Procopio Drive and 0232 Palato Boulevard in terms of value. So I just obviously skirted it off a bit here, did a little bit of a drift around this guy just to show him I don't need a Rari to uh, get my things done. But I must, uh, I must really stress that this is a really nice area of the map. Uh, me and Rob both own holiday homes up here. It's a really nice place. It's remote and you don't get all the players in the city uh, shooting you up and killing you all the time. If someone wants to kill you, they're going to have to spend a bit of petrol. So here we are pulling up to a 4584 Procopio Drive. As you can see, quite a sizable piece of land. A lot of it is dominated by the rather flat lawn. Um, as we're taking a little pan around now, you've got brick roof, uh, sorry, brick walls, fairly basic roof with a sort of honey, sort of honeycomb uh, hexagonal window on the front porch there. Uh, the uh, It's not really walled off especially well. It's just sort of wired fences and things like that. More on that later. But uh, we're going to have a look around the garden first. So as I said, it's a very flat garden. You could probably play football here. You could probably drift some mopeds around, but some basic shrubs. You can tell, you know, it, Rockstar really liked to rub it in that you brought a low-end house. Uh, so not really much on show. There's some quite nice ivy on the side of the walls there, which I think adds quite a nice effect. And there's vents all along the walls for some reason. I don't know why. So there's a little patio area down the side here, but uh, unfortunately the door on the side doesn't open. Uh, where have we seen that before? God fucking damn it! Uh, so yeah, we're going to walk around the front of the house now. Uh, oh yeah, very nice chimney by the way, must add. Now, <laughs> the single plant you've got, I don't even know if you can call it a plant. It's just a shrub really. What a fucking letdown. So obviously panning around, there's a nice porch area on the front. And I like the fact that the garage is on the front front facing side of the building. Um, I usually leave my cars in the drive though. So heading into the interior now. What you're going to find, unfortunately, is that it is just that standard copy and paste medium interior. Now, I might add, it's not low end, like 0232 Palato Boulevard. It's actually medium end. You're blessed with the Redeemer poster that everybody's seen 5,000 times. It's generally an open plan living area. You've got a nice big lounge where you can hit the bong with your mates. And then you've got a kitchen accompanying it, which is sort of this horrible greeny color. That doesn't matter, though, because you've got your whiskey. So you can take a quick shot of that every time you see the uh, paint scheme in the room. And also, you've got your trusty beer just for when that, that little shot of whiskey isn't quite enough. So yeah, I mean, uh, other than that, there's not really that much you can interact with besides the radio in the kitchen. So you can, of course, play some tunes. But a little dining area around the side here. Nothing special again, just a little four-man four -man table with some oranges in a bowl. But uh, the living area, I kind of quite like it. There's, there's a nice bit of light that comes through that window that isn't really quite a window uh, on the wall. Uh, and the sofa can fit like four, I think five people on it. Anyway, let's head off into the uh, bedroom. If we just take one last glance at the Redeemer poster we all hate so much. The bedroom is uh, sizable. You've got a double bed, which is all you can ask for in the world of GTA. There are, uh, I couldn't really work out whether this home was female or male orientated because there's women's clothes on the floor, but then there's hair dryers, tissues. I don't want to attract the social justice warriors, but I can't really tell which one this is aiming at. You've obviously got your wardrobe, which you can change your clothes in any time, and an ensuite bathroom, so you can admire yourself in the mirror every day. Lovely stuff. So yeah, again, there's just a wardrobe, the bed and the shower that you can interact with in there. Um, so now we're going to head out to the garage. Now, importantly, you can access the garage directly from the house, a feature which is missing on several other houses. Uh, and when I say several, I mean most of the houses. Stepping into the garage now, and I'm going to quickly take a quick break here to point out that I'm wearing designer earphones. Right, what you'll actually find is you've got a six car garage. That's pretty decent considering the size of the garage on the outside. It's tiny, so this doesn't really make much sense, but can't complain. So after that, it's just a case of choosing between your whips. Which one are you going to take? But um, yeah, eight, eight garages is, is pretty good as far as GTA goes. So we're going to leave the garage now. And uh, as I do in all of my house reviews, uh, we're going to show you a little tour of the uh, surrounding area because that usually influences which house people buy most in Grand Theft Auto V, considering that they just copy and paste the interiors every single time. 
Right, so basically, you can get on the roof of this house, but you will need a car to do it. There's no, uh, you know, natural ramps or anything like that, but if you do want to get on the roof, you can, I guess. It's not really much use. I mean, you can take cover behind the chimney, but you're definitely not going to fit uh, a large artillery vehicle on top. Uh, but I might quickly add that you are right across from the beach, which is one of the nicest beaches in GTA besides Vespucci Beach, of course. There's my yacht parked over there, but see, look at the size of that beach. Look at the size of it. It can catch some waves, I'll tell you. Catch some fucking waves. It's generally a nice area, like I said, look at it, beautiful. So yeah, um, now, reversing the car around, but I need to show you guys this, because I thought, you know, this is actually a pretty important point, is that you see all these wired fences and things like that. Well, they're not indestructible, and in the event of a police chase, you can just drive straight through them, so that's always handy to know. Anyway, off to the training area. Now, in the, in the neighboring lot, to uh, 4584 Procopio Drive, there's basically nothing. I don't really understand. It's like a car park with a skip. Um, but yeah, <laughs> as we head around, you've got the hairdressers just down the road, you've got the tattoo parlor just down the road. There's a number of motorcycle clubhouses, and of course, the local shop. There's this uh, six sort of quarry area that has a JCB that spawns in it, so you can fuck up your mate's car. And look, <laughs> not my crashed car, but there's a, uh, a mod shop nearby, so you can also change your car up. Uh, but is, is 4584 Procopio Drive worth $155,000? <sighs> well, I'll let you be the judge of that. All I'm saying is there's a gun shop just down the road. Thank you very much for watching this Black Eden GTA 5 accommodation. And uh, just like this guy on the left here, we'll see you soon. <laughs>